Are you going to be the next certified SOLIDWORKS expert? Welcome to episode one of Cracking the CSWE. In this series, we're going to be going over everything you need to know to take and pass the CSWE exam. In this episode, we're going to start by looking at springs, which you're going to need to know on the CSWE exam. A quick disclaimer before we get started. Before you take the CSWE exam, there's a few prerequisites you need. First, the Certified SOLIDWORKS Professional certification, and as well, four of the five Certified SOLIDWORKS Professional Advanced certifications. I would recommend weldments, sheet metal, drawing tools, and surfacing, all of which you can find tutorials on my channel for. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be reminded of future episodes. And with that out of the way, let's just get right into the video. When we talk about modeling a spring, we're thinking about a sweep, and more precisely, two things. The path of the spring, and the profile. For the profile, we usually have a circular shape of a certain diameter in the case of almost every spring. In some cases, we have a square or rectangular profile, such as in a flat spring. The path of the spring, with its spiral, is the more complex and fun part of making the spring. Generally, and for the CSWE exam, making the path can be done in three ways, increasing in complexity. The first way is to use a helix to define the path. This is used for very simple things where we only have basic control of the spring. Second, we can define the center line the path of the spring follows, which is generally used for springs with no adjustment to its overall diameter where it needs to follow a certain line. Then, the most complex and most control we can have is by the intersection of two surfaces. This lets us control the shape of the spring as well as the pitch independently where the pitch is the distance between the two coils in a spring. This cannot be done with the previous two methods. For example, we can make a spherical spring quite simply by defining the shape of a sphere and then controlling the pitch of the spring through a different surface. If you want to learn how to make that and other really cool springs you might see on the CSWE exam, make sure you stay till the end of the video. In some cases, we might need to join together volumes to make springs, such as in the case of extension springs, but that isn't too big an issue if we already know the fundamentals of designing the spring. First, we'll get into creating these paths for different applications, then make the springs. But remember, making the path of the spring is the main part as it defines the shape of the spring itself. Let's start with the simple helix. For this, we need a circle to define the diameter of the helix. Once we have this, we can select the helix button to create one. We can define our helix based on a combination of two of three options, height, revolutions, and pitch, as pitch is a relation of height and revolutions since it defines the distance between each revolution. The last option, spiral, we don't need to worry about as instead of creating a helix normal to the sketch plane, it creates a spiral going outwards or inwards from a circle. I'll admit it's a fun option, but you don't need to know this for the exam. Let's select height and revolutions in the selection box. We need to select constant pitch, which again is the relation between height and revolutions, as we don't need the pitch to change throughout the spring. You most likely won't see a change in pitch, so we won't cover it here. If for some reason I'm wrong and you see a variable pitch spring on the exam, you can use this pitch tool by defining different values for the spring at different heights. I'll select a height of 10 inches and 5 revolutions, which would be a pitch of 2 inches. The start angle lets us select the point along our circle the helix starts on. We can make the spiral clockwise or counterclockwise and control the direction the helix is made in. Lastly, we can taper our helix, which is like adding a draft to the shape of our spring. We can define the angle and direction, either outwards or inwards. As you can see, for some more complex springs that I showed in the start of the video, the helix can be limited by its very nature. Let's take a look at turning the path into a regular and flat spring, and then look into some more complex spring making techniques. We can make a sketch on a plane that coincides the start of the helix. Then, at the point the helix intersects this plane, we can make our profile. 
If we want a circular profile for our spring, in most cases, we can define a circle with the center point coinciding with the point on the helix, or we can define a rectangle for a flat spring. In this case, let's define a rectangle and give it some dimensions to see how a flat spring would look. Then we can use the sweep boss to finish our feature. Now let's say we want the second example, where we want a spring of constant diameter to follow a line. That is to say, the path of the spring follows a center line we can define. This will make more sense once we make a spring with this technique. Let's define the center path in a new part file as a line and an arc. Then we can define the diameter of a spring as well the profile. We do this by making our profile in another sketch which is not perpendicular to the start tangency of our spring path. Then the distance the profile is from the center line is the radius of our spring. We can then use a swept boss to finish the spring and control the pitch of our spring. For the profile we want to select the circle we made and for the path, choose the open sketch. Then we need to allow for twist under profile twist by selecting define twist value. And then we can select how many revolutions we want until the end of our path. This will allow us to define the pitch of our spring and create the spring based on any given dimensions. Now let's take a look at the surface intersection tool. I'll show this first with a regular spring to get the idea and then a spherical spring to show how versatile this method is. The outside shape of a regular spring is like a cylinder. More specifically, the path sits coincident to the shape of an extruded circle surface. So first, let's make an extruded surface with a circle sketch to define the diameter of the spring. Then, we can create two more sketches for the next surface. One will be a line that runs along the axis of the extruded surface, and the next sketch, a line perpendicular and coincident to the end of the previous line. We can do a swept surface, sweeping the perpendicular line along this center line. Then to define the pitch of our spring, we can define the twist of the sweep. This is where the magic happens. We can use the intersection curve option under the convert entities button drop down. This opens a 3D sketch and allows us to select our two surfaces. The tool lets us create a 3D sketch based on the intersection of two surfaces, which in this case creates our helix shape which we can use to create a spring by using our Sweet Boss feature. If you don't fully understand what we just did or the usefulness of it, let's now do the same process of making two surfaces to make a spherical spring to show it a bit better. Again, we need our shape surface and our pitch surface. For our shape, let's make a sphere surface by revolving a semicircle around a center axis 360 degrees. Then we can make our pitch surface by making our two lines, one for the path spanning the diameter of the sphere and the other perpendicular and long enough to intersect the other surface 
once it itself becomes a surface. We can control the pitch by the number of revolutions and then intersect the two surfaces to get our spherical spring path. Again, let's just use a sweep with a circular profile option to finish our spring. This is the most versatile way to make springs in SOLIDWORKS and is what you're going to need to do if you come across a very complicated spring. I'll put some examples on screen of springs you can make and the surfaces you'd require to make them. These require a surface for the shape and a surface for the pitch. It's just up to you to figure out the best way to make either of them. In my opinion, the shape is always the easiest, as you can always kind of figure out and see the shape the spring runs across, and sometimes it might be a little bit harder to define the pitch. Let's go back to our last spring to show any add-ons we might need to make, such as some hooks for the case of extension springs. In this case, the drawing for the sketch would give you all of the dimensions you need to make an end hook. Let's do this really quickly in a 3D sketch to just show what we would need to do. Before this, let's delete the sweep as we want to have the sweep go along the whole path, including the helix shape and our hook. So we'll apply the sweep to both of these sketches. In the 3D sketch, I'll make a few circles and define them so that they are tangent to each other. Once we're done, we can go into the sweep and right click to use the selection manager so that we can select both sketches as one open profile. Although what you have seen in the video might look easy, there are two main areas of making springs that you need to be successful. Perfect adherence to given dimensions and creativity when dealing with weird spring shapes. Practice in making springs will make this possible for you. To recap, when given the drawing of a spring, the first thing to do is figure out the method needed to model the spring, either helix, center line, or intersecting surface, and if multiple paths are needed for things like extension springs. Creation of paths adhering to listed dimensions, and then applying the profile of the spring. At that point, the spring will be done. If you want some more practice for springs, hit the notification bell to be notified of when I release the practice episode for the CSWE exam which will give you practice for not only springs, but everything else on the Certified SolidWorks Expert exam. Thank you so much for watching episode one of Cracking the CSWE. In the next episode, we're going to be looking at sketch blocks and belt and chain sketches. So I'll see you in that video.